Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to worship in God's house today for this, the second Sunday of Easter. It's good to see you as we celebrate and bask in the glow of Easter joy, Easter triumph, and the victory our Savior won. Today we'll follow the order of service, setting three with the Lord's Supper. So please see our announcement about that. And as we worship, we think of our Savior appearing to his disciples, providing proof, proof beyond any doubt, no doubt about it, that he rose and he provides peace, peace between God and us in the way only Jesus can provide it. So with that in mind, we'll join in the opening verses of hymn 446, Jesus Christ, My Sure Defense, verses 1, 2, and 3. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, 
to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O risen Lord, you came to your disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. God's word for this, the second Sunday of Easter, shows us that Christ is risen and with his power, he sends us out to share that wonderful news of the resurrection with others. Typically, in the Easter season, we sometimes use Acts as the first reading. And here in the early church, we see Paul going from Athens to Corinth. And there might have been some fear, some trepidation. Would the gospel be received and welcomed or not? But God says to him in a dream, I'm with you. And don't stop preaching. Don't stop. But keep sharing that good news. We read Acts 18, 1 through 11. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them. Because he had the same occupation, he stayed and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he led a discussion in the synagogue, trying to persuade both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was entirely devoted to preaching the word, 
testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when they opposed Paul and slandered him, he shook out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. He left that place and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue leader, believed in the Lord with together his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking. And do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. He stayed there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, now listen to a solo. Lead me to the cross. Yes, Jesus, the word became flesh. He bore our sin and death, and now he's risen. And it's all real. 
That's what John tells us in the lesson we have next. Our second reading is 1 John 1, verses 1 through 4. This will serve for our sermon today. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have observed and our hands have touched, regarding the word of life, the life appeared, and we have seen it. We testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We are proclaiming what we have seen and heard also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We write these things to you so that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel of John chapter 20 where the Lord appears on Easter evening to his disciples and a week later when Thomas is with them. On the, first, the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. But Thomas, one of the twelve, the one called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe after eight days, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Take your hand and put it into my side. Do not continue to doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, in the presence of his disciples, did many other miraculous signs that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We'll join in singing the hymn of the day, hymn 511. Crown him with many crowns.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We'll focus on words that I read from John's epistle, the first one, and we proclaim that word of life today. I'll just read one verse at this time. We write these things to you so that our joy may be complete. This is God's word. Dearest Jesus, author of life, bring us all the joy of life eternal with you. And as we await the time we get to see you face to face in glory, strengthen our fellowship and strengthen our faith through your word and sacrament. Amen. There are all kinds of things that I love about Easter. Easter Sunday is the great day of joy. Everything from the little lemony fresh Kit Kats my wife got me for Easter to the children with their beautiful new clothes and their Easter Sunday dresses and their fine little bow ties. I love the choir. I love the brass. I love the decorations. I love the Easter breakfast. All those things are kind of just around the day. Of course, what do we really all love? The announcement that death is defeated, canceled, that Jesus has the victory secured. But you know what else I love? I love seeing the faces of everyone who shows up on Easter Sunday. Some faces I've known for years, and it's a joy to wish them a happy Easter. And other faces may come in to God's house for the very first time. Uh, fresh faces, maybe people I haven't seen in a long time. They're showing up, and they're ready to worship the risen Lord. Of course, sometimes we convince ourselves that Easter is just a once-a-year event and nothing more. But it is so much more. Have you found yourself like me sometimes closing up the church, walking out to the car, and it's as if the power and the joy of Easter goes, <sighs> and it just disappears. Power outage, just like a storm comes through and knocks out power for a couple days. All of a sudden, we find ourselves in the post-Easter funk. Almost like, well, the kids went back to school, and here we are. John wants to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. And so he writes. He says... We write these things to you so that our joy may be complete, joyful in our Lord and Savior Jesus. What does he write? Well, he writes a lot. First of all, we read about how on that very first Easter, John ran. He ran to the tomb, and he was pretty fast. He beat Peter. He had to wait for the older guy to come chugging along and get there. And then, of course, Peter comes flying right in, and he looks at the grave clothes. John says, it is true. The Lord is risen. Peter says, he's not here. John must have held on. He must have held on to some of those words that Jesus had spoken, announcing the third day he would rise. John wanted to make sure that everyone knew it was real. So the words of our text say this. We testify, we solemnly assure you, we're taking an oath here, and proclaim to you the eternal life that's a great name for Jesus, who is, of course, the resurrection and the life. The eternal life, which was with the Father, has appeared to us. We are proclaiming what we have seen and heard also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. 
How can you be so sure? How can you live on the bright side of Easter? He assures you we saw him. When did he get to see the risen Lord? He saw him that evening when behind locked doors the Savior appears. He wasn't some ghost that came wispy through the keyhole. No, this was the risen Lord, the same crucified Lord that John had seen with his own eyes at the cross. When Jesus said, behold your mother, behold your son, that very body appeared. And John and the others were invited to go ahead and touch and see. Peter, slow of heart, he got his own appearance that day. And the Emmaus disciples, suddenly all the witnesses were mounting up. People who had seen the crucified one, now the risen one. And I have to wonder what they were thinking when all the fear, doubt, confusion, sweaty palms, listening for footsteps at the door, all of a sudden Jesus shows up right through the walls. Were they thinking, now we're going to get it. We are so condemned. We are completely going to be scolded. We have little faith. He's going to just let us have it. Oh, he lets them have it. He says, peace be with you. Let me give you what only I can give. Peace between God and man. Peace because I'm the perfect Savior and I beat death and you don't have to be afraid. In fact, I'm going to empower you to go out and share this good news. Here's your proof. I'm right here. How wonderful that our Savior does not speak to us with scolding, harsh words, even in our doubts, in our confusion, in our fears. He announces peace. Just like at Christmas, God gets the glory and we get the peace. Jesus has completed his mission. Years later, John's talking to another generation. Oh, he'd already explained there was no doubt in his gospel. But now he's an old man. All the other apostles are long gone. It's just John. And as he reaches for his pen one more time, he writes to the church, I saw it. I was there. Do you want to talk to me about Jesus? I know. This is no trick. This is no farce. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we heard him preach, which we have seen, we saw the miracles. It wasn't a trick. We observed him, and our hands touched him. The life appeared, the word of life, and we've seen it. We are eyewitnesses. I think I would like to talk to John. Of course, he would tell me about another skeptic, one who was still living on the wrong side of Easter, Thomas. Now, Thomas has a nickname you all know. There are some great nicknames in history. You got Ivan the Terrible, William the Conqueror, Charles the Hammer. What's Thomas's nickname? Doubting Thomas. But I'd like to say his problem was truant Thomas because he missed the fellowship. He missed the gathering. He, he wasn't there. We're told all the disciples were confused and fearful, but Thomas, he digs in his heels. He says, I know what it's like to be mistaken for someone else. He was a twin. How many times in his life did people look and say, hey, didn't I just see you over there? Jesus rose. That Jesus didn't have a stunt double. Are you, no, I'm not going to believe it until I see and put her there. I'm not going to believe it ever. You could call him atheist Thomas at that point. But Jesus, of course, kind, loving Jesus, 
he meets Thomas in his weakness and needs. He says, blessed are you. You have now seen and you believe, but blessed rather are those who've never had to demand proof, who've never had to see to know that my word is good and that I am who I say I am. To tell the truth, I've never seen Jesus. I haven't had, like the Apostle Paul, that time, that vision where he taps me and says, hey, keep at it. You're doing fine in Sturgeon Bay. Keep serving. Keep, keep preaching. I got lots of people here. Don't be afraid. I've never had that kind of vision. But nevertheless, I have the promise, I am with you. I'm with you. So, blessed are you, dear people, for you will get to see him face to face, but not yet in heaven. We testify and proclaim to you the eternal life. We assure you of this. You may wonder why was John so adamant in this next generation to say, he's real, he's God, he rose, you can trust him. There's no lies in the Bible. The whole word of God is the absolute truth because there were false teachers. This famous heretic named Serinthus, the Gnostic. Gnostic said, he's not really God. He certainly didn't take on flesh. He didn't die. He didn't rise. They had secret knowledge, ways of interpreting away the scripture this Serenthus was such a vile man that there's a story told by Polycarp, one of John's disciples. He says that once John was in Ephesus going to the Roman bathhouse, which is where you got cleaned up. It was the custom. But guess who he sees through the steam and the fog? Serenthus is right there. And he runs out of the bathhouse quicker probably than he ran to the empty tomb. Why? The disciples chase after him going, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, sure, this is in there. I do not want the righteous wrath of God to fall on the bathhouse and kill me too. That's how much he had fellowship with this Serenthus. None. Not a bit. He was teaching lies and he was not going to play nice or pretend. See, part of John, even in his old age, was still a son of thunder. He knew, I don't pretend away things like my living Lord Jesus. We are proclaiming what we have seen and heard also to you so that you may have fellowship with us and with God and his son Jesus. Yes, you have fellowship with God, but he's also given you encouragement right here. Yes, fellowship established by God in this Christian church. It's more than just friendship. It's more than just greeting people on Easter and saying, he's risen. It is a bond of sharing those who share the truth. They support each other with the truth. They preach the word of life together. They partner in getting the truth out to the world. It's kind of like two fellows in the same ship. If one's rowing this way and the other's rowing that way, you're just going to spin in circles. But when you're rowing together, you're all doing it. It's a wonderful blessing. This partnership is also the same word, koinonia, that God describes for communion, common union, a sharing. Jesus, true body with the bread, his precious blood with the wine. We celebrate communion. We are together, one body. We have fellowship with God. Spoiler alert, you can't have fellowship if you're all by yourself. You can't actually get together if you're not willing to assemble. Some assembly required. Thomas was truant. He missed out. He didn't get what the other disciples got. And I bet he kicked himself. Now, we know later he became a great missionary. But I bet he regrets not being 
with the brothers that night. Fellowship means you have to rejoice in the opportunity to receive God's precious feast. Let us keep the feast. Let us continue to feast on the Savior himself. He is the host, and he invites us to his table. Isn't that just like Jesus? He knows that we need peace. He knows that our hearts are filled with doubts and fears and worries, and he comes and he gives that peace to us in communion. The early church devoted themselves to these things, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, the word that the apostles taught, and prayer. You can't get a stronger faith if you're in your bed and skipping out, unless you're reading your Bible, maybe. You can't get a stronger faith if you're ditching out on opportunities to grow. Those of you who like to garden, you know you're going to get the tools out in just about a week or so. Can you imagine doing the gardening without the tools? I can't. Doing it all by hand? God has given us tools. The church has been blessed to know that in no other way will he grow us. The word, the gospel, the sacrament, communion, baptism. Gather to proclaim the word of life. Keep living on the bright side of Easter. Typically, the second Sunday of Easter isn't the best attended in the whole year. It seems like church got its fill. And then back to normal, back to just the few. May it not be that way for us. I have to laugh because when I go to another Wells church where I know I'm in fellowship it doesn't take but five minutes before someone comes up to me and says, I know you, or I know your sister, or I know your brother, or you know somebody that I know, and we play this game, and it's like that song from Cheers, where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to go. You want to be a part of that fellowship. You want to support that fellowship. You want to be there and not miss out. And that's how we keep living in the joy of Jesus on the bright side. So let me leave you with this. If you have someone that you're connected with that has a long time been maybe just, oh, Easter I'll go. Everyone goes on Easter. But looking at the opportunity to come and worship and be with the fellowship as something that they could take or leave, you tell them, we have fellowship with God and Jesus Christ. And yes, we want to live on the bright side of Easter. Make joy complete, just like for John, and walk in the truth and with the fellowship of believers and live in that peace with Jesus. Amen. Please stand. Yes, that peace of God, which transcends all understanding, let that guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord and living Savior, Jesus. Amen. And let's all join in speaking the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. You know, before we pray, I've got to tell you, Jamie, we're so happy to have you as a member of our church. And my dad used to have us all sit in the front row right under the pastor because mom was playing organ. And I'm sure that this is kind of a, a sequel to what was happening to my dad a long time ago. So welcome to the church. We're glad to have you. And we're glad to have you. We should have had children's message today, shouldn't we? So if you brought an offering along, you can make use of the offering place. Please sign our friendship register. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll gather and get communion ready. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you are the true God, my Lord, my God. And we praise you for defeating all doubts we may have ever had about life because you appeared as the resurrection and the life. You showed the apostles who were filled with fear and doubt how much you loved them by proclaiming the good news of peace. And you gave them that message to share with the world. So give us all a firm faith to believe that you are exactly what your word says and share that Easter triumph with all people. We are so heartsick because of problems and difficulties and there's still a lot of damage and a few power outages due to the snowstorm. We thank you for the workers who restored power for over 100,000 people across Wisconsin. They worked hard. And we thank you for the kindness of those who offer shelter and provided emergency assistance. Continue to restore that power and comfort those who've been greatly affected. Please touch the hearts of all to be kind and patient in times of crisis and chaos. Thank you for cleaning up the mess of our lives, for overcoming death and the grave for us and proving your love. We ask that you guide and direct Mr. Timothy Voigt as he's deliberating a call to come and serve here. And also direct myself as I continue to deliberate where you would like me best to serve in your kingdom. Give us wisdom and apply to our hearts that peace that there really isn't a bad choice at all. It's a privilege, a humble privilege to be able to serve. We thank you, Lord, for watching over those who have been hurting this week, and we ask that you bless them and remind them that you stand beside them in trouble and you are with them. Be with Liz Mertens, who is still struggling with RSV. Allow her to return to church soon and heal her and bless her. We seek all these blessings in your holy name, Jesus, and we pray knowing your will is best. Amen. So if you haven't signed the Friendship Register, please take some time to do that. We'll get ready for the Lord's Supper, and uh, we'll listen to some announcements made on the radio and some beautiful music. You are listening to the worship service of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Sturgeon Bay. St. Peter's is affiliated with the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, or Wells. The Wells is a worldwide church with congregations serving all 50 states in Canada and also serves over 25 foreign countries through world missions. 
The worship folder is sponsored in memory of Dorothy, Dorothy Grosso, who passed away one year ago on April 4th, 2023, by Dave Grosso and family. We thank you for joining us in our worship today. If you would like to contribute to St. Peter's Ministry, you are welcome to mail your offerings to the church at 108 West Maple Street, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, 54235, or make a donation online at stpetersLutheran.net. Thank you for supporting our ministry to share Christ. God's blessings to you today and always from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. The same pattern is here for us today. We're gathered and we need Jesus' peace and he comes to us and blesses us with this feast. We'll continue with the sacrament of the altar. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world and by his glorious resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in the sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.